All right, good morning, everybody. Rub the morning sleepies from your eyes, batten down the hatches, get ready for lesson 76. Today, we're going to start multiplying fractions. So let's see what we have to know about that. It's a pretty easy concept. Any time to multiply fractions, you just take the numerator times the numerator, and then the denominator times the other denominator. Here, if we had 3 eighths times 3 fifths, you just go top times top, numerator times numerator. 3 times 3 is 9, denominator times denominator. 8 times 5 is 40. It's that simple to start off with. So we'll start off a little bit with just some real basic ones before we get into the applications. 2 fifths times 3 fourths, I'm going to start off going 2 times 3. Hey, that's 6. And then I'm going to go with my denominators. 5 times 4, hey, that's got to be 20, right? So you'll end up with a fraction right now of 6 twentieths. Later on, we're going to have to go and reduce that and put it in the simplest terms, but not right now. Let's try another one here. Numerator times numerator. 2 times 4, that's going to give us 8. And now 3 times 5, that should give us 15. So you end up with 8 fifteenths. Not too tough so far. Let's go and see one other little concept. The word of means to multiply. So if we had a problem like this, what is one half of one fourth? Of means to multiply. So you would go one half times one fourth, right? And so numerator times numerator, one times one, that's one. Denominator times denominator, two times four, that's eight. Up until now, we've been taking our little fraction pieces and having to fold them in half, right? And we'd have to say, what fraction is one half of one fourth? And we'd slide it in and see that, yeah, one eighth is one half of one fourth. But sometimes you may end up with a question that you don't have a fraction manipulative that would help you out of this. That's why we got to know what of means. Like, what fraction is one half of three fourths? Well, now that we know what of means, we would simply write down one half, and we'd write down three fourths, and we know that of means to multiply, right? So I'd go one half times three fourths, numerator times numerator, one times three, that's going to give us three. And then on to the denominators, I'm going to go two times four, and that's going to give me eight. So I have a grand total of three eighths is one half of three fourths. Check out how it applies to story problems. One half of the class were girls. One third of the girls wore a red shirt on Monday. What fraction of the class were girls who wore red shirts? Well, to start off with, if they want to know what fraction of the class were girls, I got it right over here, don't I? One half of the class were girls. So I'm going to start off with one half, right? And they also want to know what fraction of the class who wore red shirts. Well, where do I have that information? One third of the girls wore a red shirt. So I'd end up going one half of one third, right? And again, of means to multiply. So pretty basic now. One times one, that's going to give me one. 
Denominator times denominator, 2 times 3, that's going to give me 6. So what fraction of the class were girls who wore red shirts? One-sixth of the class, because one-half of the class were girls. One-third of the girls wore a red shirt, so I have one-sixth. Nick found half a tub of ice cream in the freezer, and he ate half of it. What fraction of the ice cream did Nick eat? Well, he found half a tub, right? And he ate half of it, so he ate half of half a tub. Of means multiply, right? Do I even have to work this one out? Go with numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. One times one is one. Two times two, that's four. So Nick ate one-fourth of the ice cream. Check out this one. A nickel is what fraction of a dime? Remember how fractions work. The denominator is always the total number of pieces. And so we want to know how many total nickels there are in a dime. Well, there's two total nickels. So two would be your denominator. And I'm talking about a nickel. How many nickels, if I'm saying a nickel, that's got to be one. So a nickel is one half of a dime, right? Check out the next one. A dime is what fraction of a dollar? Well, the denominator is always the total number of pieces. How many total dimes equal one dollar? That answer should be ten. Again, to find my numerator, I'm talking about a dime. So a dime is one-tenth of a dollar. A nickel is what fraction of a dollar? Well, you have 20 total nickels equaling a dollar. So 20 has to be the denominator. And I'm talking about a nickel. So how many is that? One. One twentieth. A nickel is one twentieth of a dollar. Stay with me here, though, because I guarantee you're going to see a problem like this every day for about the remainder of the year. So check it out. A nickel is what fraction of a dime? We already did that one, right? That was a half. A dime is what fraction of a dollar? We did that one. We decided that was a tenth. And a nickel is what fraction of a dollar? We did that one, one twentieth, right? Check out this. This is what you're going to see every day from here on out. The answers to parts A through C show that one half of one tenth is what fraction? And if you don't see it already, you could simply write it out. One half. Of means to multiply. One tenth equals what fraction? Kids sometimes stumble on this because it's the same answer we already wrote. One times one is one. Two times ten, hey, that's twenty. So one half of one tenth is one twentieth. It'll sometimes mess kids up because you wrote the same answer right here. They just are trying to reinforce that of means times. Don't get tripped up because we're writing down the same answer twice. Check out this guy. What fraction of the square is shaded? Well, it looks to me like I have eight total pieces. So eight would be my denominator. And I only have one piece shaded. So what fraction is shaded? One eighth. And then it's going to say, use a formula to find the 
area of the shaded rectangle. If you remember, your formula for area is A equals L times W, standing for area is length times width. Well, it looks to me like my length is one-fourth, right? One-fourth of an inch is the length. Let's go and take a look at what the width is. One-half of an inch. And I have to go and multiply these together, right? Numerator times numerator. One times one. Hey, that's one. Denominator times denominator. Four times two. That gives us eight. But it's an area problem, so I want to label it as inches squared or square inches is the area, right? And that is the end. You're probably going to want a little scratch piece of paper for the Socrative quiz. Good luck and... That's all, folks.